All righty. We're just having a good time on a Wednesday morning. Let's see who shows up. Impromptu live stream. Hope everyone's doing well. We're just getting going now. You can chime in if you want to. Say hey. Jesse Hammond says howdy. Basil Tiffany says, I'm in here. All right. Well, let's see. We're just going to have a good time. Excited to you know, I just, just, yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm a little bit jet lagged. I have some bags under my eyes. So I got home Sunday night, uh, had a direct flight from London to Nashville, which was nice. It was about nine hours, but uh, it was fine. So I'm, uh, uh, yeah, happy to be back. Thank you for the uh, welcome back to the USA, uh, Michael. And uh, Corey says, what's up, Zach? Before we get into guitars, let's talk about that wooden bowl. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let's see. I think this is some kind of ceramic. Yeah. It's uh, made in Peru. And... Uh, it seems like it's some kind of ceramic. So uh, if this was, uh, I can't remember if this was a wedding gift from a friend or I got it from my grandmother. I can't remember, it's one or the other. It either, uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's nice. And I like having it here in the, uh, on the old shelf, as it were. Uh, Rick Ross says, play. All right, we'll play a little bit. Let's see if the tuner's on. Oh, it was. So we'll play a little bit. Let's see. Should we start off with the old theme, if I can still play it? Oh. Always, we have my sister Courtney is uh, moderating. She's a Court J8. You see her. She says howdy, howdy, howdy on there. She is a former prison guard, and so don't mess with her. She also used to give me noogies and wedgies and all sorts of stuff as a kid. She's my older sister, so uh, she's uh, so she's firm but polite. Oh, let's see. Old guitar guy says greetings from the west coast of Canada. Nice, Sean. Hi from Slovakia. It's good to see you, Sean. Thank you. Telecaster Bear. Hello. Let's see. Yeah, Corey, it's not wooden. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's a fun bowl. Uh, let's see. What are the logistics of getting a hillbilly band through an airport and across the ocean? Well, you know, luckily, you know, Brad has, uh, you know, people that all they do is deal with logistics. So, uh, but uh, actually, uh, the person that did the, uh, the travel arrangements for me, her name is uh, Tiffany, and she did an amazing job of uh, getting, uh, getting us around. So uh, thanks to her. Thanks to Tiffany. Oh, let's see. Hey, brother, I'm a telly guy, but I just picked up an Eddie Van Halen stand with a hard tail, and I love it. Nothing wrong with that. Ah, my sister says that she thinks that was our, our grannies, so I, I believe that's true. So, yeah. It's a, it's a fun bowl, and uh, yeah, I've got a couple mementos from my family. So this bowl was my granny's, and then these are my dad's old uh, cowboy boots that uh, he passed away back in 2017, and so I have those, and those are kind of family mementos. So what wireless system does Brad Paisley use? I paid no attention to that. Um, it looked like a Shure unit, and he had a bunch of packs because, you know, of course, he changes guitars a lot. So I believe it was a Shure unit. I think I have some pictures on my phone, which I can check later on. 
send me an email to Zach at askzach.com with that question and I can look at the photos that I have of his rig that I took over the, uh, over the tour and I can tell you exactly what wireless he had. Dennis says, hello from Chicago. Hello from France. Very nice. Uh, let's see. What specific red is that Telly claim to be? Um, I think this is, this is one of the early incarnations of Dakota red. And uh, it's just kind of a pure red. It doesn't have any, um, it doesn't have like a bunch of yellow in it, like a Fiesta, or white in it, I should say, like, uh, like Fiesta. And it doesn't have any metal flake to it. So, you know, of course, I've got some sunlight coming in and such, but trying to show what the uh, guitar looks like. Well, let's see. Good morning from Vancouver Island. Wow. Been playing for 20 plus years. Country music has taken me the last year. If it weren't for this channel, I would not have progressed like I did. Well, thank you. I'm glad to have, uh, you know, I, I was thinking back. I, I got to hang out with Albert Lee uh, backstage at the O2. I know that seems like an over the top name dropping and, and stuff, but uh, I got to tell Albert Lee how much he, mean, he means to me. And so Albert Lee was the reason I got into country music because there was a Clapton record called Just One Night that I got and I heard him play on it and I loved his guitar style. And from that I got into Emmylou Harris and Merle Haggard and Buck Owens and George Strait and all sorts of other things. So, you know, Eric Clapton and it was an Eric Clapton album featuring Albert Lee that got me into country music. So anything I can do to help out. Producer Man says hi from New York City. Um, did you fly on any of those Boeing jets? Uh, Tiffany says, uh, yes, it was like a 787. That was the one on the way back from uh, London to, to Nashville, the direct flight. Oh, let's see. Welcome home, thank you. Um, let's see, thanks for showing us young guys, uh, Chris Scruggs, Red Volkart, Don, and Luke McCrary. Absolutely, Jordan. Yeah, I, I like to learn about players and uh, and hear them and try to clue other people in on stuff that I like. practice with a metronome is needed? Yes. Uh, getting good time is important. And uh, I try to practice with a metronome at least once a week. I should do it more than that, but it's, it's really good to play slow and, and faster with a metronome. Uh, Billy says, I appreciate your YouTube. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I had a great time in Sweden, Brad. Uh, what do you think about the Baja tellies as a first step? I think they're great. I think the Bajas are great, and I think the Road Warns are great. I think the Brad Paisley uh, Esquire and, uh, and regular two pickup guitar are really great guitars, and uh, they have big necks and light bodies, and any of those uh, Mexican-made um, and collaboration guitars are really good first steps, but you can even get a a squire from Indonesia, and, it, and as long as it's not a boat anchor, uh, you can find some good ones. You just play a lot of them. Is there anyone here a fan of Corb Lund at all? Well, I mean, he's a Texas character. I certainly know who he is. More Kenny Vaughn, uh, JL Trim says. Well, I, I love Kenny, and, and that was a fun interview. Uh, I'll have to see if we can do something again sometime. Uh, let's see. Red has a great sense of humor to his playing. Yes, he does. Met Albert Lee at NAM. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about you putting your TR2 early in your signal chain. In a lot of old amps, the tremolo is at the end of the circuit. Enlighten me on your placement. Well, that's a good question, Corey. I like to have the tremolo pedal early on in the signal chain because 
specifically, I like to have it before the overdrive because it, when you have it on, it, this is subtle, but it's, it's raising and lower the volume that's going through the overdrive. And to me, it creates a more interesting effect because in essence, the tremolo is making your signal be the regular amount of overdrive and then it's cleaning up as it comes down and then it's going back. And I just think it creates a more interesting overdriven tremolo sound because it kind of cleans up and gets dirty, cleans up and gets dirty. So I just think it's fun. Uh, Dennis Flock, do you play any rosewood board tellies? I I love a rosewood board telly. I just don't own any. I mean, I own what like eight or nine Telecasters, and I don't own a rosewood board. I've you know that's that's kind of the one thing in my collection that's kind of missing is having a rosewood board one. So I've talked about you know putting something together at some point. You know, buying some parts from Music Craft or whatever. I don't know that I want to invest in another. Uh, vintage guitar but it'd be kind of fun to put something together with uh, music craft parts that's kind of my thought at this point is i might just buy a neck and body and you know get some uh get some hardware and pickups and such and just put it together myself and maybe get a little help from uh you know a friend of mine that does a little finish work and uh, i can always take it down to joe glazer to have a pluck job done on it so Oh, Corb Lund is, is Canadian from Alberta. Okay, I was completely wrong on that. So thank you for uh, correcting me there, Jordan. That, that's kind of a, there's kind of a long distance between Texas and Canada. But uh, I guess Red Volcart is the connection there. Uh, Rick says he just bought a Brent Mason Telly. It's amazing. Awesome. Uh, those, yeah, those are great guitars. I got to check one out. All right. <laughs> Plexico is always here. And I'm always happy to see him. Uh, let's see. And he put in in, uh, in, a, in a couple bucks in the old tip jar. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Plexico. You're always, uh, always good. Let's see. Jeff Mackerlin. Hey, how is your hand doing? I'm having issues as well. Well, Jeff, of course, everyone knows Jeff is an amazing player. And uh, he has a wonderful YouTube channel. And he does a lot of collaborations with 5 Watt World. And uh, yeah, my hand is doing pretty good. I've just had to, uh, whenever I play a gig, I have a Kinesio tape that I, I tape around my hand. And then uh, whenever I'm doing any kind of uh, real handiwork around the house, I put on a, uh, uh, a brace on my hand. And my, my arthritis is in here in the CMC joint. And uh, my biggest battle is to keep from hyperextending my thumb. And which means I kind of have to change the way I, I, I play. So that's kind of what, I, what I've been doing. Uh, otherwise, I take, some, uh, I take some supplements and then I really try hard not to have sugar. And I try to keep the alcohol level down. But that's been, uh, that was a little bit difficult on the European tour when they were you know, going to the bar after the gig every night. So, Oh, producer man says it's nice to have a Univibe in front of the drives. It's very cool. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Something up with super chats. Ugh, cannot bash the cheap. <laughs> Plexico is always being nice. All right. And uh, my sister put forth the, uh, the PayPal, you know, if you want to throw some, some money into the old uh, PayPal tip jar. Appreciate it. Uh, Telecaster Bear says he has a blonde 77 telly with a rosewood board. That's very cool. I, yeah. I'm going to find me a, uh, a rosewood board uh, telly at some point. I, it, it'll be this year for sure. That husky is crazy, says Music Craft Rocks. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I, I'm with you. Uh, Will Barton, my friend, says uh, welcome back. Uh, glad, glad to see Will Barton here. Uh, uh, Tim Scaro says he's 58 and he had surgery on his hand already. Uh, oh, Psionic Audio out in Memphis says, uh, welcome back from Europe. Best food of the trip. Oh, the best food of the trip was when we were in Valencia, Spain, visiting Nacho, which was just amazing. We had pa uh, paella and it was, and I've had paella a number of times and this was the best paella I've ever had. It was, it was just amazing. Um, then I think there was one time 
we had some fish and chips that was really ridiculous. And some of the best fish and chips I had was in Scotland at this little hole in the wall place that was called like Val d'Or or something like that. I posted a picture in, on uh, Instagram if you're really interested and it, it's in, uh, in Glasgow. So that was, that was really good. Uh, Jordan asks if uh, about the sire tellies. I have not played one. I'm sure they're fine. It's just you you play one and find a good one. Again, my my only beef about cheaper telly type guitars is if they're a boat anchor, and so I just don't like heavy guitars. And that's that has to do with being a 50 year old man that has hand and back problems. So, but if you're young and strong, then yeah, get get a nine pound telly. So. Okay, Jordan says, my luthier claims they're a bang for buck comparable to Squire, but I think they beat any Made in Mexico player series. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, Nacho is awesome. Let's see. I am well today, Wadey, and I hope you are too. Yeah, I, I do, uh, I do uh, you know, a fair amount of posts on Instagram. Um, so, you know, if you're wanting to kind of keep up with me, um, you know, Instagram's great, you know, because I posted stuff during the tour, so you can see some of the, the tour photos that I took, and, and so, yeah, and my sister put up uh, the link to my Instagram page, and so if you're on there, you know, f you know, if you don't, if you want to keep up with it, then uh, check it out and follow. Uh, so <laughs> Lyle says, jealous but glad to hear. Yeah, I had had some really good food in, uh, in Europe. We were, we were all over the place, and it was a lot of fun. Okay, JL Trim says, think long and hard before having CMC surgery. I did it in 2010 and definitely regret it. Now I have carpal tunnel as well. Yeah, I'm, I've been able to, to treat things with just, you know, diet and, and exercise and, uh, and a brace and, and using, you know, again, the, uh, the tape on my hand when I play a gig and uh, those things. And sometimes I'll take some, uh, you know, some Aleve or something like that before I play, so... Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Stude says, come on, ladies and gentlemen, hit that thumbs up button for Zach. Oh, I appreciate that. Y'all y'all are very nice. Ah. Waking up my hands. Uh, let's see. Good to see you, Marsh. Uh, let's see. What's your favorite acoustic? Says none. Uh, my favorite acoustic is I have an old, uh, I have an old HD28 that if you want me to, I'll go ahead and, and grab and pick it up. It'll just take a, a minute. Hopefully, I can not pull my uh, my uh, mic out. I'll just grab this real quick. This is an old 1981 Herringbone D28 that I got from Clausen's Music in Corpus Christi, Texas. And uh, it's the guitar I've owned the longest. I think I got it in 93 or 94. And uh, yeah, it's a good old, good old guitar. Strings are a little bit dead on it, which is not a, a terrible thing. But it's a, a really good guitar. And uh, then I also have a Collings, um, well, I have a Waterloo by Collings that I play a lot and it's got a, two pickups in it you know and uh, that's that's a fun thing to play let's see into the old guy friendly guitars too Zach yes oh well, let's see do you have a preferred neck radius and shape to help with arthritis issues uh, yeah I just mainly I like you know, bigger frets like 6105s or the, or the 
frets that are similar but just a little shorter that Dan, that Dan Strain uses and a lot of guys use now. Uh, and then I use nine and a half strings and sometimes I'll go down to nines and I like a seven and a half to nine or nine and a half radius. I don't really like them flatter than that. So uh, I miss my old Takamini D18 lawsuit era. Those are great guitars. Uh, Zach, where is a good place to look for vintage bodies and necks or vintage parts? Well, you go to Hawkins Music, Hawkins Roadhouse in, uh, in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and then you have to argue with, with the guy. I'm kidding, but uh, he hoards vintage Telecaster parts. Uh, if you're talking about newer parts, then, uh, you know, of course, we all go on Reverb and eBay. But if you're actually looking for old parts, uh, he's a good source. Um, yeah, nine pound Les Paul will wear you down. Best fish and chips I ever had was in Dublin, Ireland, right up the road from St. Patrick's Cathedral. Nice. Never seen you play acoustic. Yeah. I've, I've done a couple episodes. In fact, the last episode I did was on the Buck Owens acoustic. And uh, unfortunately, the headstock broke off on that guitar. And it just broke off on its own. It was sitting here on a stand and the headstock just decided to come off. It didn't fall. And so uh, we're figuring out if we can uh, uh, get it glued back on or whether it's going to need to be, uh, you know, they have this carbon fiber stuff that they you know, can put on there to, to make it hold better. Because the neck, the headstock's broken twice now. So I don't know if the Buck Owens acoustic is going to make it. Is there a speaker cabinet company you recommend? Uh, I mean, I would, yeah, Mojo Tone is a great source. And I would, uh, cabinet size and depth and material makes a difference because it's kind of like the, um, the body of an acoustic guitar. And so if you like a deluxe reverb, well, you can get a deluxe reverb type, you know, cabinet. And, uh, yeah, you can go with that. That's what, uh, Mojo Tone's a great source. Love the channel. Thanks for all you do. I now have the Fender Custom Shop. Nice. I also struggle with CMC joint issues. Man, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say get, get physical, you know, go to a physical therapist, uh, find out the things you should and shouldn't do, and uh, just do your best to take care of it, but don't stop playing. Well, looky there. Welcome home. Well, thank you, the itchy brudda. Uh, whoa, that M-I-J Sonny Brody I put back. Nice. Let's see. Argentina. I'd love to see the show playing my no-caster. Nice. Hi, Zach. Good morning from San Antonio. I was in San Antonio a couple weeks ago to see the, uh, the rodeo. Went there and we saw the rodeo and we saw Brooks and Dunn. We did a, a quick flight in and out of there, but it was a lot of fun to be back in Texas. Stratosphere for new parts. Yeah, that's, that's a good source for, uh, for, for new parts. Guitar Everyone says, hi, Zach, welcome back. I've ordered a set of the Fender Pure 64 Tele pickups. Yeah, that's a great set. It'll, it'll do you right. To, to, I like that set, and I like the, the Duncan uh, Antiquity Bridge and Neck. That's your good, kind of easy to find, non-boutique, as it were. I, and I love the boutique uh, guys, obviously, because I've got Bud's pickups in this guitar, and I've got Ron Ellis pickups in a, a number of guitars and Ron's rewound some vintage pickups for me and stuff so but as far as like easy to find pickups I like the Fender 64 set if you're going for a 60s thing or I like the the antiquity set from uh, uh, Seymour Duncan the flat pole one yeah Todd you know parts are you know uh, yeah it, Whenever I'm looking for parts, I just end up hunting on Reverb and, and eBay and, and just find, you know, it just depends on what I'm looking for and how important it is that it's like vintage correct. I don't mean a vintage part, but let's say, you know, I want to have a bridge plate that has the patent number on it instead of patent pending. Well, that's really hard to find. And so, you know, you have to look for a long time and find one. So, or pay the super high price for a vintage one. You know, people want three or $400 for a 70s bridge plate, so. Uh, let's see. Seismic cabs were cheap and sound good. Good. 
Who do you get to, to pay? I don't know what that means. Do you have the uh, RAF Mirage turned on right now? I do, none, yeah. Oh. My 67 Telecaster has not been refinished. My 57 Esquire has been, and Danocaster did that. Top three must-have for people looking to get into session player gigging regular. Uh, oh, uh, you need to network. Uh, as much as possible, you need to become part of a scene somehow. You need to go out and see people play. You need to ask, you know... You need to tell people that you're available and you need to wait around until somebody gets sick or their kid breaks a leg and you're ready to go. That's the way it works. Basically, everyone has their guys and then you got to wait until one of those guys is not able to make it. And you got to be ready and you got to be ready to fill in and do a gig at the last minute and have to learn, you know, 40 tunes in a day. And that's that's the way you get your foot in the door. Uh, yeah. Peter Florence made some amazing pickups, and I still I have them in, in a couple of guitars. Those are really great. Oh, let's see. Wayne Memphis Mojo. Memphis, Tennessee checking in. Do the Nashville folks still refer to the pickup position as front, both, back? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, yeah, front, both, back. That's, that's, yeah, that's what I hear a lot of people say, you know. Or the middle position. A lot of times you go front, middle and and back and uh yeah i've uh, my friend hal that uh lyle at uh, sionic audio knows well he's always telling me you need to play on the middle position more so i try to Zach, we saw J.D. Simo here in Iowa City. What a wonderful guy and incredible player. He blew my mind once again. He blows my mind all the time, and sometimes I take him for granted, and, uh, you know, because he's my friend, and we hang out and go eat spaghetti or whatever together, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, and then I'll go see him play, and I'm just blown away at how great he is. Oh, Exact Tone Solutions is here, which I'm using my Exact Tone board, uh, I'm using the small one uh, today, and I, I use my exact tone boards all the time. I've got two of them, one of them for gigging and one for here you know, at the house. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with my exact tone board. Those are, those are great guys. Uh, I love them. And, uh, you know, and, they, and they fix uh, a good pot of spaghetti too. So, oh, let's see. <laughs> The blend circuit sound is interesting. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been meaning to wire up a guitar like that. Nashville folks sure like to plug it up. I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, it sounds good. <laughs> Zach, if you could have one famous player's guitar, which would it be? I'd have James Burton's 52 Tele that he painted red. That guitar just looks amazing and was used on so many great sessions. Or I'd take Albert Lee's 53 Tele that's that's missing all the finish and has all the autographs all over it, where he you know has like Willie Nelson and Dwayne Eddy, where like everyone that Albert's ever played with, you know, back in the 70s, you know, signed the thing. So. None. So what do you like about the Mostortion over the Nobles? To me, the Nobles is, is really great, but it just sounds like, to me, it's, it, it's not transparent, and it sounds like you've done channel switching, and it makes the high strings sound really big, which is a great thing, but to me, it's, again, it's not transparent sounding. But I like them. I own two old ones. I don't know where. Uh, usually, I have one of them in the box here, so I don't know where it is, but uh, I'll find it out. I'll find it at some point. Uh, welcome back from Europe. 
can't believe Iceland was on the tour. What an experience. It was an experience. To be in Reykjavik uh, was, was amazing. Get to walk around and, and uh, I didn't get to see the lights, but uh, you know, did get to have fun in Iceland. Uh, let's see. What's your thought on the La Brea pickup set, both neck and bridge versus standard US vintage Telecaster pickups? Uh, I really like the set. It's a great set, and uh, I especially like the bridge pickup. The neck pickup is kind of your run-of-the-mill darker neck pickup. And so on its own, it's kind of dark, but what that does, it creates a really good middle position. And then the bridge pickup on the La Brea is kind of like a little bit of a hopped up 60s, late 60s set. And it's, it's a really great sounding pickup set that's easy to find. It's another one that I'd recommend. So yeah, I guess, yeah, the Antiquity set, the 64 set, and then the, uh, the, the Brad Pay, the uh, La Brea set. To me, the, your choice between the 64 set and the La Brea set would be, do you want a darker neck pickup sound, which you get from the La Brea, which makes a better middle position, or do you want that kind of more open, bright neck pickup sound that the 64 set it has because it has a nickel silver cover? That's going to be your, why you would choose one over the other. Oh, let's see. I play a Strat through a 59 Tremolux. Wow, that's a, that's a nice rig. Um, I mean, you could always get a, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, a Klon type pedal, you know, get the, uh, oh, what is there? Rocket pedals, the Archer. I'd get the gold Archer and uh, that'd be a, a, a great boost on that, you know, especially if you want more mids. Otherwise, I'd get a Boss EQ pedal, the GE7. I mean, that's an incredible boost pedal because you can really dial in what you want. I think it depends on whether you want to add dirt or not. If you don't want to add dirt, I'd get the, the Boss pedal. If you do want to add dirt, I'd get the uh, the Klon copy or I'd get a Sparkle Drive. I think this is a really great uh, kind of more transparent. It can be more of a boost. And uh, yeah, this was one, one that I got uh, not that long ago. This is another one of my favorite overdrive and boost kind of pedals. Um, let's see. Just pot, bought an Epiphone Les Paul Jr. The P90 sound great. Nice, Antune. Whoever knocked over your bucko and stole your nobles. <laughs> it didn't get knocked over. The headstock just came off on its own. And the nobles is in, in the closet here. I, I know it is. So I've seen it. Oh, let's see. Hello from Eagle Pass, Texas. Nice. Let's see. Oh, I, yeah. Someone was, yeah, the Eagle Pass was asking a question. It just went away. Where do I go to learn chicken picking? Um, you know, there, you know, I, I learned chicken picking from watching the, uh, the James Burton uh, Hot Lux video. That's, that's where I learned it from. You know, specifically doing this kind of thing. I mean, that, the, the, because to me, chicken picking is the pakatata. Everything I was just playing is is straight up, you know, James Burton, and it's that da 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 da, you know, and so you. Know. Uh, they should do an artist endorsement Zach Tone board. <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. I don't I don't know how many would uh, would would want it, but but that's nice. All right, uh, I found La Brea sound just like my Fraylin Blue Special. Oh, nice, that's good, because that's another set I really like is the Blue Special. Thoughts on Triple String Tree from Glazer? If you're having trouble with this G string not uh, kind of not noting right in the open position, it, it, it really helps with that. There's certain times when, because the nut really has to be cut pretty much perfect, or you're gonna get this weird overtone when you hit the G string open. The third, the Glazer three string tree will will negate, will remove that and make it where you don't hear that anymore. And also it kind of makes the that string 
feel a little firmer, if it were, when you're, when you're bending. I'm struggling with my sparkle drive. Well, you know, the, the key is you turn the tone control all the way off. You get the, uh, the clean set about there. And yeah, the gain set there and the volume. So set it like this. And you know, if you need to, you know, look, look back at this, but this is a good starting setting on the, on the sparkle drive, I think. So I stole that one from Reggie Young. And I'm just going to tell you all this. This was one of Reggie Young's sparkle drives that I, uh, that I, I got from his, uh, widow. I was doing some work for her and, uh, and she gave me this. So this was one of Reggie's and that's why it has the Dymo stuff on there is because uh, Reggie did this. That, so he knew that, you know, the guitar input went into here and then it went into the rest of his pedal board. And this one had a bad switch at one point and then he got it repaired and he never removed the, the little label here that says bad switch. So this is a, uh, yeah. And that's why it's on here is because this was Reggie's. It's obviously it's not the one on his, on his board. Cause it, uh, you know, it, uh, his board is still together and at his, at his, uh, at his home. So, all right. Uh, hi. It's, Plexco says, hi again. Any power issues at the venues in the EU? Did all the gear work okay? Yeah, everything worked well. I mean, uh, you know, we never had any power problems or anything. Everything worked really well. I mean, it, uh, the tour went really well. And I, there was one night where one of the guitar techs uh, was sick. And, um, and so I ended up helping out one night, which was, uh, it was actually a lot of fun. Because, uh, you know, it was just nice to help out and kind of uh, pay my way a little bit, as it were. So I got to tune guitars and uh, hand them to Brad's tech. So uh, that's what I did while he was changing, controlling Brad's sounds um, via foot controller or that he actually has up on a, on a bench. Um, I, uh, I tuned guitars and handed them to Dave so he could take them out to Brad. So it was fun. Let's see. Let's see. Getting kind of. Do you play own any Gibsons? Uh, I do. I have an R9, but I, I rarely play it. I'm just not a uh, not a big Gibson person. Uh, cluck note, cluck note, cluck cluck. That's true. Then the squawk. Buck buck bucka. Love the schematic shirt, Fender amp. Yes. And this is Ask Zach merch. So, you know, there it has the, the little Ask Zach, uh, you know, logo on there and stuff. And so it's a deluxe reverb amplifier. And so you can go to, oh, you can go to askzach.com and hit the, the merch thing. And you can uh, pick up one of these shirts if you want to, uh, if you want to be cool. Yeah. Well, let's see. Jeff. Let's see, moving down, making sure I'm caught up. Let's see. All right. First time catching it live, Cole, do you regularly use an EQ pedal? And if so, which one? I use the, uh, I, I use the Boss GE7 and I have it modded by Exact Tone. And uh, I kind of take it with me. I don't have them on my board, but I add them off to the side when I need one. So I, I you know, I have uh, a way, you know, I'll, I have a little two prong daisy chain thing. And so I can just add a pedal onto the front or the rear of, uh, of my board if I need to. And on the, my bigger board, it has an insert where I can add things in. Let's see. Bad switch. Thanks, Mrs. Young. Yes. Any True Tone Lounge interviews coming up? Yes. So tomorrow... I'm uh, interviewing uh, Joe Glazer and Steve Warner. And so they are going to talk about the guitars that, uh, that Joe made for Steve. So the, the red Tele with the three pickups and the Strat, the red Strat with the Tree Alive inlays. Those are two guitars that Joe made for, uh, for Steve back in the early, 19, early to mid 1980s. And so we're going to have, we're just going to talk about uh, those guitars and, and their kind of collaboration and, and how that red telly really became kind of a signature instrument for Steve. So yeah, so that is what's coming up on the True Tone Lounge tomorrow. We'll be taping it, so it'll probably come out a couple weeks after that, so. Hell from Idaho, all right. 
Yeah, I, mean, I know you mean hello, but it's funny when you see uh, hell. Thoughts on the 50s Baja Tellies? They're great. I mean, just go and play a couple of them. Find the one that you like. So that's my dog barking. She thinks some, something, someone's here. So I don't know. Any new or newly discovered music uh, that you're listening to or liking? Um, no. Um, I'm distracted by my dog barking and there's no one here at home. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best not to get up and, and look. So, um, lordy, lordy, lordy. Um, let's see. New music that I've been listening to. I think my kids have exposed me to, to newer country music. And so I've listened to like Tyler Childers and some different things like that. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of been, uh, and, and just, you know, some of the newer country music that I, I really don't listen to. I like Sierra Farrell. I like Sierra Hull a whole lot. She played mandolin on the Brad Paisley tour. She opened a couple shows and she sat in with the band and sang whiskey lullaby with Brad. She's amazing. Let's see. <laughs> Jesse says, let's meet the dog. Oh, uh, yeah. The, I don't know what the dog's doing. The dog's probably still at the door. So, oh, really looking forward to that Steve Warner, Joe Glazer interview. I, I, it should be great. Uh, yeah, I think the brothers, brother Osborne, that'd be a, that'd be a good, uh, that'd be a good interview. Have you checked out Zach Top and his playing? Not yet. Uh, you, you'll have to send me a link. So you can send it to Zach at askzach.com and I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll check it out. So let's see. We, uh. We've been going for about 20 minutes. Uh, let's see. What happened, Ben, in Belfast? I see him falling out with symbols. Uh, I don't know, PJ. I wasn't there, so I left. That was the only show I wasn't there for. So I, the day they did that show, I flew back to Nashville. So I'll have to ask Ben about that show. Uh, that, uh, that, <laughs> that sounds really interesting. Uh, let's see. Todd Williams says Steve Warner is so overlooked. Yeah, he is. He's such a great player and such a great artist. Uh, what is Oliver Anthony playing with Chrome center plate? I don't know who Oliver Anthony is. Okay. I don't know. Uh, the market is flooded with Indonesian, Korean, and Indonesian guitars are flooding the marketplace. Prices are dropping. Your thoughts? Uh, well, the pr prices are, are dropping because the market was, was uh, you know, the manufacturers thought that the, the pandemic era of, you know, period of sales was going to continue. And they kept producing just a ridiculous amount of guitars, even when everyone started, you know, going back to, to work and, and uh, going to football games and going to swim meets and stuff like that. And so the market is just kind of correcting itself at this point, unfortunately. So the producer man says, breaking into sessions, I was once told you have to hire them if you want them to hire you. Well, that's, that's interesting. So uh, I guess you, uh, you, you have to, uh, you know, you know, I guess you have to cut a session with a, with a engineer or something like that to get him to recommend you. Let's see. Resin. Okay. And they're, they're answering my sister's question and giant pinhead, which I, I love that name. I have to run out. Thanks Zach. Your videos are always wonderful. Stay cool. I will try. What do you suggest for a player wanting to get better at country style tele playing? Um, man, the best thing you can do is, is start really working at getting your pick and fingers, getting coordination. And the first thing I ever learned how to play was the, the working man blues kind of, not the intro lick, but just kind of the. There's a uh, man named Randy Boyd that came to my church um, when I was probably about 14 years old or 15. And, uh, and so, you know, I kind of started from there and then I found a teacher, uh, you know, that, that I could, you know, sit down with and learn. So, you know, first things first is I would try to, you know, get 
Uh, and even if it just... You know, using, using the pick to play the low strings and then, and then using, uh, you know, your, your fingers to pluck, you know, the, the higher strings and just kind of work on those things and uh, get it going. Let's see. Any thoughts on the American Professional Telecaster? I have not played one, but uh, greetings from India. Greetings from uh, from Tennessee to you in India. If Leo is the Henry Ford, then Joe Glazer is the Harry Hyde of the Telecaster. Joe Glazer is, is incredibly important to the uh, to Nashville and the Telecaster, and really to any kind of instrument in Nashville. Let's see. I think you're the authority on tellies and absolutely love your no tone on the neck pickup wiring. Just awesome. Thanks. I applied the no tone mod to the middle pickup on my strat also works. Nice. I clipped my fingernails on both hands. <laughs> That's your personal. All right. That's good. Uh, any opinion on the blues junior? Yeah, I had one and uh, I really liked it. It's a good, I, I, I like the pro junior better. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's just a good, small, simple amp. But uh, the Blues Junior is a good amp too. But I, I prefer the Pro Junior. And then, yeah, I would kind of go Pro Junior and then jump up to a Princeton. Oh, uh, let's see. Jim Walker. Hello, Zach. Sierra Hull is amazing. Yes. Yeah, she is fantastic. And uh, she, she would sing Whiskey Lullaby with Brad doing Alice and Krause's part. And then also, of course, playing Beautiful Mandolin. And uh, got to see that a couple nights on the tour. And wow, what a what a player and singer. And she has a great band and she has great songs. And yeah, I highly recommend people check out Sierra Hull. Howdy, howdy. Hey, from England. I'm being naughty at work. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you had a desert, one desert island guitar, which one would it be that you have? Uh... I guess it would, it would be my 57 Esquire if I could have an amp too. If it wasn't, then I'd probably have my little uh, Waterloo or something like that. So, yeah. Let's see. I use my middle finger while picking for that. Good. Have a great day from LA. Thank you, Fred. Chris Jones the Great says, best amp for road use. I've used twins for years, but they seem overkill these days. I like to use a deluxe reverb. Um, I, I tour with a headstrong Little King, which is a, a basically a 12-watt Princeton reverb, but it has a 12-inch speaker in it instead of a 10. And that's what I tour with. I mean, and usually that's what I'm using here. I'm using my old deluxe reverb today just because I still haven't unpacked some stuff from a run that I did last month. And so my headstrong amp is, is sitting here with, you know, still underneath the cover. And uh, so I need to get that back, you know, in the... Uh, in the playing spot in my in my office, but uh, yeah, to me, a, a you know a Princeton type amp with a twelve or a deluxe reverb is really the way to go. Let's see, Herc. Let's see, guitar. Everyone is talking about Herco Blue thumb picks and fingers uses. Yeah, yeah. I tried to be a thumb picker and I just couldn't get along with it. It just never worked for me because I was so used to doing up and down strokes and strumming. I don't see how people strum with the thumb pick. Does yeah, exactly. Does that desert island have electricity? If it does, then I'd take my old Esquire. So let's see. Veronica Phillips says morning, Zach. Morning to Veronica. She uh, is, is, I'm grateful that uh, she's one of my Patreon members. There's a couple Patreon members on and, uh, you know, they're, they are really what, what keeps the channel going and uh, I always appreciate them. Don Knotts, ever try removing the low E string? Um, no, I've never really been tempted to do that. Of course, Keith Richards does that, but I've, I, I like having the low E string. Uh, hi Zach, greetings from New Jersey. What were the lightest guitar strings you ever had on your telly? I had the, I used the same string set that uh, James Burton used, which is 9, 10, 12, 24, 32, 38, which that 12 for a G string is really light, as is the 10 for a B string. And that's the lightest set I've ever used. And I liked it a lot. And, you know, I had my playing style, you know, I was, you know, basically imitating James Burton, you know, in the in the early 90s 
Let's see. Corey says, uh, you're a side guy in the 70s and you get to back up one of the following ladies. Who do you choose, Dolly, Tammy, or Loretta? Oh, I would choose Dolly. Yeah, I mean, the other, they, they'd all be cool, but I mean, Dolly's such a great writer and singer. I, it would just be amazing to get to, especially to you know play like the gut string part on Jolene. That would be really cool. Or play, you know, Mule Skinner Blues or, you know, a lot of those songs she had, you know, hits with back then. Let's see. I have a Silver Face Princeton Reverb, Rivera Champ 2, Rivera Super Champ. Or, wow. I only repair the... Nice. Yeah, those those old amps are, are, are made well. And uh, they're, they're really sturdy, Seth. Thoughts on the Sur Ombre? Well, I know it's a... a brown deluxe copy and i've heard good things about it i haven't played through one i'm not a big brown deluxe fan i like the brown princeton but i'm not a big you know it's just too martially sounding for me welcome back zach says dr m thank you better artist merle haggard or waylon jennings well i think that's an unfair question cole but um i would say my preference if i had to choose i would say um Merle Haggard, but only slightly. I love both of them, and I love playing their songs. I mean, I mean, who doesn't like playing Luchenbach, Texas, or, or uh, you know, so many other great you know Waylon tunes. And of course, Reggie Reggie Young played on a lot of both of their records, and so Reggie played on all sorts of stuff for Waylon throughout the '70s and '80s and '90s, and of course toured with him some. And Reggie played on a lot of the Merle Haggard stuff in the late '70s, early '80s. You know. That's the way love goes and stuff like that. So, yeah. That, that's, but I appreciate the question, Cole. Uh, let's see. As Gibson and Fender stand today, which do you think more closely rem resembles that of the company in its respective glory days? Man, huh. I don't know. I mean, it depends on the year, and, and it's like, those companies are, are kind of in a, in a weird spot because of the pandemic. During the pandemic, all the money people were really happy because they were selling lots of guitars. And then things slowed down because everyone went back to work and started going to football games and stuff, yada, yada, yada. And so both those companies are kind of in, in a different position right now. And a lot of pressure is being put on. That's why you know, Gibson lost its, you know, they changed CEOs in the last year or so. And, uh, you know, who knows what's, what's happening at Fender. But I think it's just, it's, uh, uh, it's not a fun time to be making guitars right now if you're high up the food chain, probably because there's a lot of pressure from the, uh, the stockholders to uh, be making the kind of money that you made in uh, 2020 and 2021. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I had to build my own Fender Harvard amps. Wow, that's impressive. I, I love, I have a, a 59 Harvard over here and it's a, it's a great amp and I love it. Ain't no good old boy ever saying no Swahili. <laughs> that's, that's a line from the uh, Netflix special on We Are the World uh, where Waylon Jennings uh, walks out of, the, uh, of the, the session because he didn't want to sing in Swahili, which of course none of that ended up on the, the album. Let's see. Oh, Mark saying that he met Don Rich back in 72. Wow. He gave me a Don Rich labeled red pick. Still got it. That is awesome. That's amazing. I, was it like a light gauge or a medium? Yeah. Corey says Reggie was also in the Highwayman band, which, yep, yeah, it was one of the sickest bands ever. And Robbie Turner is an amazing steel player, and uh, he's still out there playing. Joe says your Reggie Young interviews were incredible. They were incredible, and I don't say that they were incredible to me because I got to I, I got to do them, and that was incredible. And I got to sit down with one of my heroes, and who was kind of in the last stages of his life, and uh, I got to sit down with with Reggie, and I got his. You know, he's one of the only guys that I got an autograph from. So, yeah, so. And he, he signed the back of my 67 telly, the head, back of the headstock. And so Reggie's, you know, way, way up there. So, yeah, it was incredible to get to do that. And guitar, everyone says, the, and the Brent Mason interview. Yeah, the Reggie Young and the Brent. Yeah, Brent was another, another favorite because, I mean, of course, I 
played all sorts of uh, Brent Mason licks, you know, in the 90s, you know, it was like, um, yeah, everyone was... play those Bill Lawrence pickups that Reggie played. Well, I played Reggie's Strat and they sounded really good in that guitar. I tried putting them in a, in, in a guitar that I had and I, I didn't love them as much. They uh, just seemed like the set that he had really worked with his 57 Strat really well. Uh, Waylon Jennings used to own the Night Spot. Yeah, Mr. Lucky's. Yep. That, uh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, Waylon spent a lot of, lot of time in, the, in Phoenix. Yeah, Tim. Yep, I played Neon Moon. Lamar Brewster says I love the Red Volkart interview. That guy doesn't get enough credit. Monster player. Yeah, he's a he's a monster guy. I mean, just a. I mean, he's one of the nicest guys on the planet, and it's just always a treat to get to hang out with Red. And uh, Brad talked about on the tour that uh, he talked about a couple of years ago. He took Red out with him as his opening act on one of these European tours, and I was like. That would have been the only thing that would have made the tour any better is if we would have had Red Volkart with us too, because he is such a great guy. And it's just, just to watch him play and get to hang out with him, he's just an amazing person. So, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. I guess we've been, been going for a, for a bit now. Um, I guess I'll tell y'all what uh, the next Ask Zach episode will be released uh, on Tuesday. Of course, you get to see it on Friday if you're a Patreon member and you get to see it without commercials. Um, if you want to check that out, go to Patreon. You can, you know, I think my sister has posted the link there a couple times. But the next episode will be me. Uh, I taped Nacho Banos uh, talking about his 53 telly, comparing it to an original 1950 broadcaster that another friend of mine in, uh, in Switzerland brought to a show. And so we're backstage in Zurich, Switzerland, and comparing a 1953 telecaster with an original broadcaster. And uh, it's interesting, you know, we look at like the, the finish differences and all sorts of stuff. So it's a, it's a really, really good episode. So that'll come out Again, on Tuesday, but of course, if you're a Patreon member, you get to see it on Friday. Oh, let's see. Uh, odd as it may sound, the Don Rich pick he was using and gave me was a thin. Yes, that's what I, I was thinking that he used a thin pick. Hi from Dallas, Zach. You're always a good hang, kind sir. Well, thank you, Mark. Yeah. Nacho is the Blackguard man. He, I think... I think uh, Nacho is the patron saint of the Telecaster. I think between his collection and the books that he's written, like the Pinecaster book, I think he's he really is the patron saint of uh, of the Telecaster. So, Thomas says, "Do you use in ears?" Yes, most gigs I use in ears. Uh, not many people use wedges anymore, and I like using in ears because it protects your hearing, unless you, of course, turn your pack up too loud, but. Um, I like a lot of bands like to play really loud now and drummers like to hit really hard and cymbals and such. And so I don't like using earplugs because it makes everything sound funny. So, uh, yeah, so I've just gotten used to using in-ears and most bands do that now. So I use them and I just have a set of Sure in-ears that are, I got them off Amazon and they were like 80 bucks or something like that. There's nothing special about them. There are no molds or anything, but they, they work really well and they sound really good. Let's see. Country and Western upstairs, rock and roll in the basement, small rodeos, and lots of fights in the parking lot. Nice. Mr. Lucky's. Did Michelle Caps get Jimmy's Red Strat in the Musicians Hall of Fame or the Country Music Hall of Fame? I haven't heard about that, but it, it certainly belongs there. Uh, and I think the 
you know, either one of those, you know, especially a Musicians Hall of Fame, that'd probably be the better fit. Uh, <laughs> Tim Scarrow says, I got tinnitus to prove it. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's why I try to protect my hearing. Enjoy the remainder of your friend. Thank you for sharing with us all. Well, thank you, Wadey. Hope you have a great day. Telecaster Remaster. Now I know who that is. So, and, and he's, he's a good guy. And we got to hang out in Vegas and uh, we had some pastries and stuff. And that was, that was a lot of fun, Telecaster Remaster. So, hey, Jesse. Uh, Stephen Holt says, earplugs weren't the thing back in the 70s. Hearing loss is. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Yeah, high watt custom 100. That'll that'll ruin your hearing. As will twin reverbs turned up to seven or whatever. Favorite wood on the body of a telly? Uh, definitely swamp ash. Yeah, I like light swamp ash, like a three, three to four pound body. That's a like especially a three and a half pound body. That that will make you a really good telly. And so most of my guitars are swamp ash. I think I have like one or two that have alder bodies. I like alder also. Let's see. Oh yeah. And Tim was talking about uh, having a high watt with JBLs. That'll uh, that'll really take your take your head off with the with the high end. I love the I love JBLs, but yeah, loud. They're really gonna you know they've got a lot of high end to them. They've got clarity to them. I should say that it's clarity that they have. Would you consider doing a video on Mike Lewis? I, I was aware of, of Mike Lewis. I never had a chance to uh, to meet him, but. Uh, Really, uh, really great guy that had a you know, very positive effect on uh, on Fender, and uh, I wish I, I wish I could have met him. But that that is a good topic for a for a video. Let's see. I think we are, are going to wind up in a little in a couple more minutes because I think we've been going about an hour. So I need to get back to uh, other things, and uh, I got to start doing my taxes. Oh my goodness. Uh, I was gifted a Fender Squire Tele with uh, what would be the best upgrades to do best pickups. Um, I, you know, the uh, the Antiquity uh, Seymour Duncan set is uh, is really great. The La Brea set is really great too, and then uh, the Fender 64 set. I would get any of those are easy to find and they're not too expensive, and I would see which one of those you could find used on reverb. And get that. And if you want to go darker, I'd go with the Antiquity. If you want to go a little more jangly, brighter, I'd go with the the 64. And if you want kind of in the middle, uh, I'd go with the La Brea. So, yeah. Do you find in ears or headphones, for that matter, to impact your touch, feel of the instrument, and car yes. So you have to be careful about the the levels and how you set everything. And you kind of. I kind of get real crazy about mic placement and placement of my amp and everything playing live and using in-ears because it's uh, you want to have as much consistency as possible because you don't want to spend a bunch of time adjusting instead of playing. And so when you're adjusting stuff, you can't play and you can't entertain people and you can't interact with the rest of the band. So My Les Paul came with a nasty, waxy pair of used earplugs in the case. <laughs> that two twin reverbs is loud. Uh, you ever try a set neck telly or strat? I haven't. I remember when Fender started making some of those back in the 90s that were set necks with uh, nice maple tops and humbuckers. And No, I never never played one. The dude says, hello from Japan. Well, hello, Duderino. Uh, Zach, speaking of Steve Warner, do you have your special 130? I don't, I got rid of the special 130 because it was, uh, I, I liked it a lot. It was a great amp and it was, you know, inexpensive, but I, uh, it was just kind of on the heavy side and also had the Tone Master. And so I ended up getting rid of the special 130. 
So, and it, yeah, it could absolutely cause hearing loss. You know, if Julian Lodge plays through, uh, Julian Lodge tends to play through, you know, a deluxe reverb type amp, whether it's made by Magic Amps out in California, which I think they're, they've kind of shut down or a place through a, a rental, you know, deluxe reverb most of the time. Uh, and usually effect wise, he uses just a, a, a Strymon flint for the reverb. And then uh, he a lot of times will have this boost pedal that's out of Austin that's really expensive. It's like, I can't remember what, it, what it's called, but it's, uh, anyway. Uh, curious about titanium saddles. I have not tried them. Played any FJNs? I have not. I remember seeing those at a uh, trade show years ago. I've certainly played guitars that were made by Fuji Jin, but I've never played a Fuji Jin labeled guitar. I've talked about the Labreas a bunch in this, uh, just in this live stream, Rick. But I think the La Brea set is a really great kind of hopped up late 60s uh, Telecaster set that's really great. It has kind of a dark neck pickup, but what that does is a dark neck pickup makes the two pickup sound better. So it's a compromise. It's like, do you want the really clear neck pickup, you know, which is great by itself, but then it doesn't have that great kind of fat dual pickup sound, which really comes from having a darker neck pickup. So. It's always a compromise. So, but the, the La Brea set is great. It's got a dark neck pickup. It's got a, a, a nice beefy but twangy bridge pickup. And uh, yeah, the, the, the two pickup sound is really great. As is the bridge. Loudest player I ever saw live was Dick Dale. Yeah, he was crazy loud. Let's see. I blame Red and Nacho for making me a telly fanatic. Well, those are good guys to do it. Ed from Alabama, have you tried any Surfy Bear equipment? No, I haven't. I've been I've been curious about them, but I've just uh, you know I've I've haven't had a chance to really play through one. I was at uh, in Stockholm. There's a a great shop called These Go to Eleven, and they had some Surfy Bear stuff there, and I regret not plugging it in. My sonny has a JB in the neck. It's dark and nice with the bridge. Nice. Well, guys, I think uh, I think I'm gonna you know call it uh, call it a day. You know, I've been on here for you know a little over an hour, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take off and uh, go uh, work on some other things. Uh, and uh, just wanted to give y'all, you know, wanted to do a live stream since, of course, I've been out for a while. You know, in Europe uh, again, we'll have a regular Ask Zach on Tuesday with. Uh, Nacho talking about his 53 Tele, you know, comparing it to a, a, an original broadcaster. So I hope you will check that out. Uh, I highly recommend if you're not following me, me on Instagram, uh, that's a, a great place to follow. I don't post like crazy. I post maybe once every two days, but you get good updates on what's going on and like when I'm doing things or if I'm out on the road or whatever. So uh, great place to uh, check things out. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope y'all have a wonderful Wednesday, and uh, yeah, come uh, come out and see see uh, see the next ask, ask Zach on Tuesday, and really appreciate appreciate you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.